Hello everyone, Simon here. Welcome back to our architecture tour of Dishonored. In this video, we are going to walk our way through the flooded district. So the flooded district is flooded. <laughs> I mean, there's not much else to say, is there? <laughs> the, it's, it's the part of the city that has, um, it's been flooded because the, I guess the, the seawall broke and now it's been Abandoned to the plague and the water. So there's water there, you can see the water, and there's fish in the water. The fish will try to kill you, so we're not going to go swimming. We're going to try and avoid the water. Uh, what can we say about this? I actually don't have very much to say about the architecture, I don't think. I mean, it's mostly the same stuff, except flooded. <laughs> I mean, it's mostly it's similar to the things we've seen before in the rest of the city, except it's water, and except it's falling apart even more than the other parts. So I think I'm just going to mostly walk through it, and uh, I don't have much to say. Um, we are in an industrial part of the city, though. You can see that these are, I mean, there's cranes, and then there's the big, tall vertical spaces. This time it's not because it's a prison but because there's industrial equipment on the inside, so there are tall spaces uh, for factories and machineries and other things. Um, have we been to industrial parts of the city before? No, I think this is the first time. All right, so maybe there is something we want to say about uh, the industrial part of the city, or it used to be, now that it's, now it's just water, right? So it's brick. Is it brick? It is, it's brick, right? So they're brick buildings. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five to seven story brick buildings. Uh, housing machinery. So the architecture technology is brick, which is fairly, uh, fairly old fashioned, as it were. So, um, I guess this would be early industrial era or you know in in the or like this game's equivalent of the industrial era early industrial revolution buildings new factories i think that's like a, an old house you see the pointed roof back there so the it's a they're slightly new forms but the construction methods are not that different from what existed before right so there's the old pre-industrial buildings and then as new machines were invented and new factories were required, they built these industrial buildings to house them. But they're in many ways, they're very similar to the old architecture because it's, it's, uh, it's a new thing. And I guess the next thing we would see if the city continued to develop as opposed to fall apart and, and get flooded, uh, we would start to see like steel frame structures as factories would be the next thing. So you, you kind of have old architectural technology housing the new machines. The new machines make new technology for you. Then you can use that to make more steel and then you, and then in turn you, you take the steel and you make steel factories instead of brick factories. You see what I mean? So, so the, the transition from pre-industrial to industrial, like you need like prerequisites before you can build the next thing. Like you need the brick factories to make the steel before you can make the steel factories, you know what I mean? And by steel factories, I mean steel architecture uh, for, this, uh, for the factories. Alright, let's just walk through, let's not spend too much time just standing around and talking. So, uh, what does that say? Hold on. Rudshaw Waterfront. Well, I mean, it's not really the waterfront anymore, it's more like water. It's more like just Rudshaw Water now. So I think we're going to have to use our powers to get through this without falling into the river. There are some interiors that we can look at. Let me just climb over here and we'll get inside one of these buildings. So we can look at the uh, insides too. So over there we have newer factories and you can tell because there, there's no windows and there's no balconies. So those are definitely factories. Back on this side, uh, these could be apartments or office buildings. And then back over here, I think it's more apartments back there. So this might be slightly newer than, than this stuff. Or at, at least it's a different, different, uh, zoning, different use of buildings, right? 
Uh, should we go in here? Let's go in here for a little bit. Maybe this is out of sequence. Uh, there's no, there's no uh, ground entrance here. That's why we have to climb up here. So we have a makeshift. Uh, it's not makeshift, is it? No, it's 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 an actual bridge, but it's fallen apart after a while. So on the inside, we can see that these are actually steel frame on the inside. So these are relatively new buildings. I mean, the the outside um, load bearing walls are brick. But then on the inside, holding up the roof, there's steel structure. So it's a composite steel and and brick structure. Actually, is it steel or is it iron? I think it's steel. It's uh, green though. It's kind of like bronze. Well, it's metal. Let's just say it's metal. <laughs> so there's a, a it's a mixed brick and metal structure, right? Is there anything in particular to say? I don't think there's that much to say about it. Surprisingly empty on the inside. Maybe it used to be a warehouse, but then that's... Well, structurally, it's not strong enough to be a warehouse. Uh... Unidentified industrial structure. Not sure what machinery would have been here. I mean, there's some bits and pieces left, but... You know, this does not require a building this big. So I don't know why they have a building this big for this particular structure. Uh, we can go through here. Let's go to the Greaves Refinery. The Greaves Refinery is supposed to be a whale oil refinery. So they kill the whales, they take the oil, and they refine it into the fuel. The glowing white stuff is the fuel. What do we have back here? So, uh, more industrial buildings. The refinery is over there. These are apartments, I believe? On this side? There's also buildings on the cliff, too. So up there, there's more of the city. We can't go up there. Let me... There's an indoor here. Let me just see what the uh, interior of this, thing, of this building is. Uh, there's a chair, there's a person, there's a heater, there are mattresses. I think this it's implied that this is a, it's an alternate entrance. I think it's implied that this is an apartment because it's a bed here, right? Although it's kind of empty and broken and it hasn't been occupied for some time, it seems like. So, apartment building... Greaves Lightning Oil Company. Let's go over there. Oh, there's also uh, homeless people living here too. Before. Ah, but before, I mean before I killed them. Because we need to clear the map for the architecture tour. But uh, there's also homeless people. So there's still people living in the flooded district, completely abandoned by the, the government and the rest of the people of the city. If we climb over this wall. We can see uh, rats. We can also see here there is a sort of a train station. So this would be where they uh, ship the oil out of the factory. The tracks, it is implied that the tracks would have continued that way, although I don't know where it would have gone. Because there's no more foundations and no more tracks over there. I'm not sure why it just doesn't end properly here, but the tracks. This would be where they uh, ship the the whale oil out of the factory, I guess. In fact, can I just see where the other side of this goes? I don't remember seeing tracks on the other side. Uh, let me just get up there. Oh, there they are. There are tracks. So the tracks continue to go that way and then out into the city, right. I mean, you can imagine at some points this would have been quite busy and lively. Uh, so there's giant silos or tanks for the whale oil. There's a giant crane there. And uh, there's a tall building, presumably with machinery inside. Can we climb up there? I don't think I've ever been up there. We have a look. Let's have a look. And then down here there's another building. I can uh, get down without injuring myself. So more tanks of oil and 
I think this is like staff room, control room. Uh, this particular control room controls the stair for some reason. Oh, you can't turn it back up again. For some reason the stairs fold up and then pipes extend down. Which is kind of weird because why would you have the staircase interrupt the pipes? But anyway, that's how the uh, the game puts it. Back here there's lockers and things, so I think there's a like, staff room or something back there. We can get back there, I think. Just have to climb up onto the roof to jump in. Uh, hmm. Alright, there first. And then up there, so the... the back room. Uh, there's sinks, there's lockers, there's chairs. Alright, so this is like a, a changing room. With lockers and things. So if we come over here, climb up these stairs. Eventually we can get around the building and inside. So we can see like the steel frame stuff attached to the brick stuff. It's a... Uh, it's a mixture of things. There's a lot of steel though, so this is this is new stuff, right? This is a new technology, or relatively new technology compared to the rest of the city. You can see uh, the giant steel frames there. We do have to come back here to get to the other side. And uh, the steel is all bolted onto onto the brick structure. I'm not sure how much sense that makes, because steel... I mean, steel is actually stronger than brick. So what's going on here is that you have stronger, a stronger structure leaning on a weaker structure, which is the, the opposite of what you'd expect. What you'd expect is the weaker structure leaning on the stronger structure, right? Because why would you have... Like, the steel should be strong enough to stand on its own without having to rely on the brick. Oh, am I in the wrong place? Oh, no, this is right. Uh, and then, let me get up there. So what I'm wondering is, can I get up there? I can't get up there, can I? No. So this is as high as we can go, and we can see that the river is on that side. Right, so the ships, I guess, would uh, bring the whale and the whale oil in here. Uh, those would be warehouses, I believe. There's unidentified machinery there and warehouses. And uh, more smokestacks in the distance. So this is definitely the, like this half. This half here is the uh, industrial part of the city. Back there is a commercial office building. We will go there soon. And then around there, that looks like residential. You can see the chimneys where there would be fireplaces and the shop rooms. So so that appears to be residential back there. That's commercial, and then this stuff is industrial. And the industrial stuff you see have uh, much flatter rooms, you don't have the fireplaces, you don't have the chimneys like that. Although you have much bigger smokestacks. And uh, there's fewer windows because, you know, you don't need windows in, in factories. Well, you, you should do. You kind of should have windows in factories. But uh, it's not as important as in apartments, for example, where you want as many windows as possible for apartments. Alright, so uh, that's what we can say about the city. We need to get back down again. What's the best way to get back down without getting ourselves killed? Oh, this chain... This chain... is uh, gonna get me killed if I jump off, I think. Is that water, though? Alright, let's see if I die. I almost die. Wow, hey, I didn't die. Alright, let's, uh, let's not try that again. Let's get out of here. So this is the whale oil refinery, although we didn't really get to see a lot of equipment. Oh, we didn't go inside. Uh, there's not much to see inside either. I mean, there's some pipes and, and tanks and various machinery, but... Well, there's pipes. It's, uh, it's pipes. And whale oil. The bright white stuff is whale oil. Uh, not much to say about the interior. I mean, there's pipes. <laughs> I don't know what else, what else is there to say about that. Ah, crap, there's rats. Let me just get away from the rats. No, 
no, stop eating me. Climb up, climb up there. Ah, oh, crap. Alright, let me climb up there. So all the parts are there, right? There's the refinery, there's the train station to move the goods out, there's a, like a staff area here. I mean, all the parts are there. Let's go behind the apartment. Because that's a, a different way of getting back to where we were before. So down here... Get back to the flooded district. It's not entirely clear why th this place would be below sea level like this. Unless the ocean rose. Like, why would they build the city? I mean, this is right next to the water. Why would this be below sea level? I mean, this is not, but then as we go down there, it is, and that's where it's flooded. And also, given the propensity of, of this city to build on top of itself, why would it not just bridge across the water and just continue building upwards? I guess it's the plague. Like, the plague means that everybody's dead. And uh, now that everybody's dead, there's no one left to live here anyway, so they abandoned it to the plague, I guess. Uh, there's more There's more little fire pits and, and mattresses, so there's more plague victims living around here. You see the mattresses and the fire. So there are people living in the abandoned parts of the city. Like, you know, mattresses. Mattresses and things. So there's the water. We came up the, the street from down there earlier. Now we're looking back down. And there are a few apartments. As I said, it's pretty much the same stuff as we saw in other parts of the game, so I'm not sure if there's anything else to say about all this. I mean, we have the mattresses and furniture, and it's been abandoned, but then reoccupied. <laughs> so the so the city was flooded, all the people left, and then the plague victims were dumped back in. So the, it's it's been it's flooded, evacuated, and then reoccupied by plague victims, and so now there's a mattress there. It's uh, kind of convoluted. But uh, people moving back and forth. Yeah, and you see more mattresses down there and bits of food. Alright, let's get down to the ground again. Or maybe I can go across the rooftops. Maybe it's better to go across the rooftops so we can get a good view of the city from above. So as we said, these are the uh, apartments over on this side. You can see... You can't really see, but that's an apartment there too. So these buildings with the uh, smokestacks and the, sh and the sharp roofs are apartments. And then down here we have the industrial buildings on this side, although those are apartments too. But those are definitely industrial back there. Okay, so the next part is through here. So the street is flooded on that side, and then there's a little courtyard here, which leads to the next part. I don't know... I guess this is private property, because you have to come through a building to get in here. So this is through a building. So there's a little square back here, but it's pedestrians only. I guess it's open there, except it's closed off. So this is like a, a little nook in the city, a little uh, enclosed courtyard in the city and the water's pouring in from out there. Wow, that's disastrous, look at that. And these beams trying to uh, hold the buildings together, I think. So the beams are leaning on the walls to stop the buildings from falling down. And the water just keeps pouring in. Okay, that's pretty bad. Alright, so through here, Central Rudshaw Rail Line Station. Although it's not really much of a station, as you'll see as soon as we load this area. This is the station 
and there's literally only one track. There's like a tiny little track uh, jammed by one train. This is the train station. It's not much of a train station, is it? No. No, it's just not much of a station. I wonder why. Okay, I mean, I, I guess I kind of know why. It's because the train system, it's a small one. Only used by rich people, and it's been retrofitted into a city that wasn't designed for it. So it's not like they demolished a big part of the city and built a massive train network, and they just kind of retrofitted a tiny little tram system into the existing city, and that's why it's it's so small. And given how small it is, we, we have to conclude that it's not used by the masses, it's only used by a few people, and, and if it's only used by a few people, then it's going to be used by a few wealthy people. So this is not uh, this is not mass transit, like when we think about trains, we think about mass transit, but this is actually private transport for rich people. Because otherwise it doesn't make sense, like why would the station be so small, right? Uh, so this part is also flooded, we can see there's a lot of water down there, I don't know if there's any point coming down. Uh, that's been gated off, so I guess it used to be that the pedestrians and the uh, the plebs and the poor people would walk along the street down there, and then up here there's like an elevated tram system. But now the elevated tram system has been hastily uh, repurposed into a walkway above the water with these uh, sheet metal bits being placed across the tracks. So these are residential, I believe. Uh, we will, we'll see some of them as we go up that way. So for, for all of you who enjoy post-apocalyptic uh, fiction, I mean this is it, right? You, you have a city that's been flooded and then there's people coming back to live in it and then like retrofitting uh, the structures so that they can live in. So like propping up these elevated walkways on the old buildings, old crumbling buildings. I mean, it's pretty cool to look at. Architecturally, um, I'm not sure there's much I have to say about it because it's just, it's really vernacular, right? It's just people doing whatever they, they can to survive. This thing though, it's, uh, I think it's the Dunwall Chamber of Commerce. So it's a commercial office building that was newly built just before the place got flooded. <laughs> so it was newly built, and then the city got flooded, and then they abandoned it immediately after. So that is a statue of the Empress, the late Empress. And also, I guess I should talk about the triangular building too. So the thing with triangular buildings is that um, they're awkward, right? Because when, you're, when your office ends in a the, in the sharp point, like how do you use that pointy space? You really can't, like you can't put a desk there, you can't really... I like, guess it doesn't make a very good office when it's just like a pointy shape. So pointy buildings are, are less than ideal because it's really difficult to use the corner. But, but these buildings happen when land prices are so high that you just build on whatever land is available, right? And so this pointy building is also the newest building. It, 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 it actually makes sense because what would happen is all the other plots of land would have been claimed by older buildings. And so if you want to build a new building in the city, all that's left is the awkward bits, which is this pointy bit. And so then if you want to build a new building in an already in a already crowded city, then all the only pieces of land that are left are the uh, are the awkwardly shaped ones. And so you, then you build the new buildings on the pointy site, and so you end up with a pointy building. Um, the other aspect of this is that if a city has laws or 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 has a uh, government that encourages some measure of open space in the city, like if, uh, if if the city has laws requiring a certain amount of the city's surface to be parks or, or squares, so that you know there are public open spaces in the city, well, those open spaces would often be built on the awkwardly shaped pieces of land, right? Because so the buildings would take up the ideal rectangular bits of land, and then the odd shaped bits left behind 
would become the gardens and the parks and the squares because it's difficult to build on them anyway, so we might as well just make those parts the parks, right? So the fact that uh, this pointy bit of land has been occupied by a building would suggest that the government of Dunwall does not care about open space. <laughs> like, like, they don't have laws mandating open spaces. Because if they did, then the awkwardly shaped bits of land would become the open space. So the fact that even the awkwardly, bi shaped, uh, awkwardly shaped bits of land are built upon means that there probably aren't any laws requiring open land in the city. Does that make sense? Um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so this is interesting, and it's also um, reminiscent of of uh, crowded cities. I guess um, one example would be Times Square. Times Square being the intersection between uh, two roads. Times Square, New York. So, uh, Times Square. It's not really a square, it's an intersection. It's uh, the intersection between Broadway and... and 7th. Yeah, so it's an intersection between the Broadway... So so the 7th Avenue, I, I believe, points straight up. And then Broadway is slightly diagonal. So then what you end up with is, is, the, is the triangular bits of land, and it's, and it's pretty famous for having these really narrow buildings at the triangle and new york you know like dunwall is a city where land prices are really high and this is really it's a really dense city and therefore even the the narrow bits of land are built upon so then you get these triangular buildings like this so that's that's one example one famous example and here we can see uh the intersection there and the uh, resulting triangular bits of land there uh, yeah, so there's this kind of narrow building, which is a little awkward, but at the same time, you know, because land prices are so high in New York, even that stuff would be built. Alright, so let's, let's move through here. Behind here we have more residential apartments, although again, I don't think there's anything new for us to say about it. A small studio apartment, there's like a couple of beds. And I guess back here would be a toilet. Pretty small. And given that we are close to the industrial district, this is probably uh, lower class dwellings. Because um, factories tend to smell bad. <laughs> I don't know what whale oil is supposed to smell like in this game, but most industrial districts uh, smell pretty bad. And so generally residential buildings that are near industrial districts would be cheaper and lower quality and filled with poor people who can't afford to live in places that don't smell bad. So that, that that's consistent, right? So we had a, a small apartment there. This apartment is... well, I mean, this is a staircase. I don't know what this used to be. The wallpaper is um, domestic. It appears to be a, a home, or somebody's home, but there's no furniture left. This might be a, a richer family, actually. I don't look at it, because there's a grand staircase, except there's no other rooms left, so I can't really tell what the layout of the house was like. You know, the flooded district is not as flooded as you might imagine, because there's a dry ground there. It's only the lowest streets that are flooded. And it seems like abandoning this is a little drastic because most of the areas are actually not flooded. But uh, as we said, it's not just the flooding that's a problem, it's also the plague. So, <laughs> so, so that's why it's flooded. But you'll notice, look at that, there's a, there's a terrace there. I mean, given the way the city works, you would imagine that eventually they would just close off the flooded areas and then make this the new street level. Uh, shops, so apartments and shops, so this is, you can imagine this used to be quite a lively part of town. 
there's a little uh, stove thing here. I guess there's like an outdoor eatery or something. It's uh, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it, that it's so run down now. Uh, old brick structures. That's a little medieval. Look at that. There's little uh, the detailings in the gate. Is even old, it, like it's even uh, it's quite old fashioned. So those are what are they called again? Um, murder holes. That's right, murder holes. So uh, in old castles, murder holes. Well. Not those. It's a hole in the ceiling of a of a gateway or passageway in a fortification through which the defenders could fire, throw, or pour harmful substances or objects such as rocks, arrows, scalding water, hot sand, quicklime, tar, or boiling oil down on attackers. Boiling oil was rarely used because of its cost. Similar holes called mech Key collations were often located on the curtain walls. Maybe making location is the better one. Yeah, there we go. These things. Uh, that thing there. So it's a hole on the side of the wall where you would drop stuff on invaders. <laughs> so if people are trying to lay siege to your castle, you'd like you drop things on people as they try to um, break down your door. So that's what those things are. Well. That's what they meant to be, but that's only decorative, right? So this is a gate. And then, if you're trying to charge through the gate, they would drop stuff on you. Except this is not real. It's only decorative. So it's a it's a decorative mimicking of old medieval castle technology in Dunwall. So it, it implies that this harkens back to an even older version of this city, right? So I mean like this this pre-industrial brick stuff, sure it's pre-industrial, but it's not it's not as medieval as this. So this is even older this gate. Or it or it is implied that some of these gates and then fortifications at least decoratively um, take inspiration from from even older architecture. Which would suggest that this is uh, an older part of town, maybe? We haven't seen that stuff in other parts of the city, I don't think. Alright, let's go into the uh, this office building here. As we move our way through this part of the game. So this is fancy, look at that, look at that door. Look how fancy this is. So as we said, this was newly built just before the flood. So uh, we have nice fancy glass doors and art deco furnishings on the inside. Uh, if you... Hmm, we need like a timeline, don't we? We need a timeline of architectural styles. So art deco comes after the Industrial Revolution, or I guess alongside the Industrial Revolution. So art deco would be newer, right? So the old medieval stuff would be really old. And then there's the pre-industrial stuff, and then there's the industrial stuff. And so the Art Deco stuff, it belongs with the industrial stuff. So the timeline, if we uh, go front, well, it's back to front. So if this is like, if time is this, this is old and this is new, uh, the Art Deco stuff will be here, and the medieval stuff will be uh, old here. Uh, it, it, this is a bad timeline, my fingers are a bad timeline. But the, the uh, decorative elements, in here, tell us a little bit about the age of the uh, building when it was abandoned. I don't know if we need to walk through the whole thing. Well, there's electric lights, for example. You notice there's not that many candles in here, and not that many like old fireplaces. So the furnishings and the decorative parts of the buildings tell us that this is newer, and also probably. Uh, wealthier than some of the surrounding areas because I mean well before everything broke down it looks like it used to be quite nice 
but uh, everything is of course <laughs> broken and uh, water damaged and abandoned by now. Oh, the the floor planks. So what happens is when when um, when timber is is flooded, it will soak up the water and it will expand. And so uh, so if if you have a lot of flooding damage and you, you have timber floors and you have a lot of flooding damage the timber will will soak up the water expand and crack and and it will, it will kind of push itself and and crack and so that's what this looks like afterwards when when all the wood has pushed against each other so badly that everything's kind of cracked open then then this is this is what it looks like so this is actually relatively accurate water damage on timber flooring like everything just kind of buckles and cracks and breaks open. Uh, what is here? I don't want to go there. Do I want to go up or down? Actually, I want to go up, don't I? There's an office. There's a bigger office, but there's no staircase anymore. Let me just find a way to get up so I can show you. Uh, interior courtyard for light. This is kind of useful because uh, you save on lighting bills if you can get natural light into your office. So there's an interior courtyard for natural light. And then up on the uh, upper floor, on the corner end of the building, we have a big office. Presumably for the boss. Whoever is the boss of this business. Uh, or maybe it's just an archive room. Because there's a lot of uh, filing cabinets here, aren't there? Anyway, Dowd is here. So in the game, this is a boss fight. But uh, that's not really relevant for the architecture. So we have a big office in one end of the building. And then I guess a series of smaller offices along the corridors. Although most of it is broken. And so there's not much we can discern from what's left. Really tall ceilings again. I think unnecessarily tall. Although, given that this is like a, a chamber of commerce, I guess they want to impress visitors. But uh, aside from being impressive, this is really a waste of space. Because you can easily put a floor there. You can easily put a floor there and have double the floor space in this area, right? So it's it's kind of a waste of space. We have tall ceilings. Anyway, we have desks, office desks, in cubicles. Cubicles is a, uh, I guess it's not that new. All right, so it's an office building with cubicles. All right, let's go back down, and let's move on. So. To continue our tour of the flooded district, we have to get down here and move down into the sewers. So all the floors are broken. Everything's completely wrecked. But this used to be quite a big building, look at that. There's, a, what is that, like three, four stories? And then there's a basement underneath. So there used to be a lot of business in this building. But all of that is, uh... It's gone now. What is that? Outflow area A. Which is odd because you would think that the flooding would flood the outflow area if this is underneath the water. Are we underneath the water? Maybe we... Anyway, I don't know what's going on. But we're going to continue onwards into more flooded district. Uh, and now we're back in the industrial area, and we are in a canal. In a canal where they have managed to hold back the water, but you can see the water overflowing at the top there. So I guess behind there, it's just filled with water, right? So they managed to hold the water back here. This used to be a canal, and this is cool. I mean, the uh, the inside of a of an empty out canal. As we said, I mean, again, like, there's nothing new to say, but as we said earlier, the canals would have been used to to transport goods around the city. 
by boat, and there are the remains of boats inside the canal as well. And cranes and factories and warehouses on both sides with bridges going across. Oh, there's a bone charm here. Let's grab that. Alright, let's move on. It, it looks cool. I don't have too much to say about it because it's just industrial. Like that's all. That's all there is to say about it. Over here, so this, you will notice there are dead bodies. They are dumping plague victims in this part of the city. So they, they evacuate out of the city or out of this part of the city. They wall it off, and now they're. Dumping dead people in here from those trains. Like that. So I'm guessing the, the train track is new. So they built the train track through here. I don't know if they built it before or after the plague. But uh, now they're just dumping dead people in here from the trains. Right? Uh. So those are factories, that's residential I believe, and so is that there, you can kind of see. So from the arrangement of the windows and the existence of smokes uh, of chimneys, you can tell which buildings are industrial and which buildings are residential. Let me get up there, because uh, we can get inside one of these apartments. If we come this way, so this used to be the street level, right, so this is a canal. The canal ends here? Alright, so it's like a dead end canal. And that is a warehouse, so I guess it kind of makes sense. And this used to be the old city street. Uh, here we have apartments again. There's a door there, or it's been closed off, so you can't go through, but. I mean, it used to be okay, like these apartments used to be fairly decent, it seems like. Come across to the side, there's a sink, bed, or at least mattresses. I mean, these are, I mean, it's not, they're not luxurious, but they're good enough. Apartments. Alright, let's get back out. But all of this have been abandoned to the plague. And now they're just dumping dead bodies in the old canal. That's, that is, that's disastrous. And everything's falling apart too. Uh, do we need to look at the warehouse? I don't think so. I'm not sure there's anything to look at anyway. No, there isn't. Well, let me just prove it to you. So over on this side, there are steel framed things against the brick structure. And I guess this used to be a warehouse. Or, I mean, there's storage there. And there's a bit of storage here. There's a bit of a staff room, I guess that is. I mean, it's vaguely industrial, but there's no clear indication of what it actually is. Oh, there's some survivors, dude. Look, look at these guys. They're alive. And they don't even seem to have the plague. Ah, uh, wow. Hey, look. <laughs> these buildings have been destroyed. Not sure what's going on there. Like, I don't know how they got destroyed. Um... Not only are they destroyed, but most of the rubble has been removed. I mean, it, it hasn't been entirely removed. There's a bit of rubble down here, right? So rubble here, there's broken bricks here, but there's not enough rubble to make up the rest of the building. Assuming that this is the same as that building, this is not enough rubble. So they have cleared away some of the rubble as well. I'm trying to like trying to piece together a sequence of events that makes sense. Like, when would this building have fallen down? Before the flood? After the flood? Before the plague? After the plague? 
it's difficult to tell, and I'm not sure if we if we need to think that hard about it. Maybe it's, I mean, it's just broken, like all the rest of the city. So the old street had a new gate put in, so you can see how they put the metal gate inside the old stone arch to wall off the uh, the plague districts. Oh, this side, I believe is uh, not entirely closed off because there used to be guards here before I removed them. So I think that side is where the uh, city is closed off for the plague. This might be just a, a transitional space between the, uh, the abandoned areas and the not abandoned areas. So there's the wall there. In fact, let me just get close to it. These buildings are really, really broken down. Oh, there used to be buildings here too, look at this. So this used to be a building. This corner implies that this used to be a building. So it is possible then that some of these buildings have been demolished to make way for the train track. That's possible. Or the train track was built after the buildings were fallen down. That's also possible. In any case, everything is falling apart pretty seriously over there. Uh, you notice, so beyond the wall, so there's the wall there, everything on this side is broken down. The things on the other side, though, are intact. Look at that, those rooms are intact. And in fact, we can get up there. Let me, let me just climb this building so we can see more clearly what's going on. Uh, where can I go? Up here? And um, up to there. I can almost see over the... I can't get up there. I can't get up any further. I can probably get up there. Uh, if I can just there. So you can see that the roofs are intact on the other side of this boundary. So that other part is not abandoned. This side is abandoned, the other side is not. And they're dumping all the plague victims back there in the abandoned part of the city, right? Although some of this is intact too, so I guess it's not that bad. What is there to say about this? Nothing. No, no, nothing else. I'm just trying to think. I mean, you, you take the you take the existing city design and you just break some buildings, and that's the end up with this. So it, I mean, not to uh, not to suggest that it's not a lot of work. I'm sure the game designers put a lot of work into making this stuff. But in terms of architectural concepts, like it's not. There's nothing else to say. It's just buildings that have fallen down. <laughs> They have fallen down in mostly structurally correct ways, like the uh, the walls peeling off, like that. All right, and then the next place we're gonna go is out here. So the gate goes into the in the intact part of the city through there, well, there's not much to see. We are gonna go this way to the old port district. And I think this is still... This is still abandoned. Okay, the wall is there. We are still on the abandoned side of the city. Right, you see the uh, the buildings falling down on us. This is super dangerous, like you shouldn't do this in real life. They can fall down at any point. Uh, the old streets kind of crumbling into rubble. In fact, there's the wall right there, that's interesting. Why is that wall there? Do we just flip around to the safe part of the city somehow? Uh, 
All right, and this is the end of this level, I believe, because down here is the sewers. We're not going to look at the sewers again. We've seen sewers before. These are different sewers, but conceptually it's the same. All right, so that's the end of our little walkthrough of the flooded district. There really aren't any new architectural ideas for us to see. It's only uh, a visual tour through the city or the parts of the city that's been flooded and abandoned to the plague, which, as you might imagine, is, is run down and collapsing and, and everything's falling apart and rotting and there's rubble everywhere. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.